Here we have the 4th Doctor's sonic screwdriver made by Rubber Toe Replicas, as used by Tom Baker in BBC's Doctor Who from 1974 until 1981. A quick look at the presentation case. It's a sturdy box, magnetic held flap at the front which will open with a ribbon. It's got embossed on top an old classic Who Doctor Who logo. Opening up the box, there's a covering sheet of high density foam which then I move out the way to reveal the sonic screwdriver in all its beauty. Obviously the sonic screwdriver is held in place by foam, it's very easy to get out, slightly snug near the rear. The rod and the spring will come to last. Here is the stand and the plastic tube here, very easy to remove, which mates into the stand into which the Sonic obviously sits into. This is another Doctor Who um, emblem, which has been, I guess, uh, cut very finely with a laser, because it's incredibly fine work there, and it's actually recessed, as you'll feel. So as you can see, the case with all the high density foam packaging will keep everything in good condition. You also get a certificate of authenticity from Rubber Toe Replicas. Mine is number 93 of 500 and it is hand signed by Nick Rabato. The stand is also signed by Nick and again number 93 of 500. Okay and here's the Sonic. It's wonderfully made. It's all solid metal construction as you can imagine. The emitter ring or the halo at the top is brass on the inside where the rest of it is all an aluminium type material this is all metal you can see the bullet is metal and the rear what they call the magnet is also painted but metal very very solid feel to the whole thing it's got the markings exactly as you'd expect so when you order your Sonic from Rubber Toe Replicas, you actually get an option to have a weathered look. Now I've gone for a completely brand new, so it's shiny new, burgundy red, bullets not damaged, no issue around there. And I've already peeled off the aged colour ring option that you get around here because in actual use, and you see it in, if you watch very closely to some of the Tom Baker uh, shows, this area here where the thumb was constantly going up and down uh, was wearing and actually went white so you can suspect that actually the, the movie prop was perhaps plastic there and rubber to replicas have done a decent job of replicating this wear but I've peeled it off because I wanted a brand new, I want this to age and wear with me and uh, although I wanted it to be based on the Tom Baker as close as is possible uh, I still wanted it to be, let's say, an as new sonic screwdriver and that's exactly what I've got. So this thumb slider area, I'm just using my thumb and as you can hear I've actually got the sound emitter already installed. It comes installed, comes with the three batteries that it requires three sounds. Now the sound's actually coming out of the bottom rear here. So this this angled slit has actually got some black cloth. If you look really closely, we'll get the sound emitter chip out of there um, by pulling off the base. It's only a friction grip. We'll, we'll talk about this more later. But as you can see, you actually need to have this fairly well depressed before the sound takes place or is triggered, which, which is absolutely fine. You get used to it. It's a full extent. Now one other interesting thing about the bullet head, and I've never seen any Sonic do this, is you can actually, if you're careful, pull by holding the bullet and the magnetic tip, pulling carefully, you can then extend the head. So as you can see I've now got an extra shaft of metal going up to the bullet head, and that was as used in Genesis of Daleks, and I believe one other episode, but doesn't rem I don't remember it as well as I do Genesis of the Daleks. So there you have, and you can see the detail up here, uh, to pull it back before it triggers so you can see it more clearly with that, with that noise. The detail up here exactly the same. So Rubber Toe Replicas have really made their best attempt to make a replica, uh, screen replica, as best they possibly can. There are some features that you don't normally see on others, it all being a metal construction is one, and the ex extended emitter tip, uh, bullet head tip is, is another. Um, all in all very pleased with this. Um, I have of course got my normal cosplay 
plastic character creations plastic screwdriver that I'm only putting beside this to show you the differences and the difference in quality obviously um, this is this is leaps and bounds apart but this is my trusty screwdriver I've had for some years now that I've, that I've taken with me with the wrong sound uh, and I've managed to put up with that for all these years and now I have myself a screen accurate or as as far as is possible screen accurate accurate replica now some people don't like the replicas with sound in because of course in the actual set although the spring action would have been real they wouldn't have caused any sound and the sound was added post-production nick robato of course has considered this and the friction grip bottom is removable and just by pressing down the actual sonic few taps I can then remove <laughs> a few taps as in there we go I can now remove the sound process and I've now got a hollow inner which I can to be honest just refit my friction grip sonic they do actually supply another spring and rod which you insert into here but I really don't see the need because there's no less springiness because there's actually the main spring is already up here in the upper mechanism collar so I'm not sure why they've supplied that rod and that spring the actual springing is occurring regardless and I really don't need that and if anything what I'd probably be putting something in there with a, uh, a black roll of card or something to, to darken this up again so that it's not uh, you don't see the silver reflection if the light were catching you but as you can see you've then got the option without the sound device by removing it easy to remove and you can insert whatever you like in the bottom there you've got a bit of room you can you know i can get my finger in there so there's plenty of room to do what you like in there it's quite a bit louder out of the actual sonic screwdriver three cycling sounds and i'm just going to reassemble this and put it back to the way I need it. So these two items, the spring and the pole, I'm gonna put back into the case and uh, probably never need them again. I will have the sound uh, interface within my Sonic. That's just the way I want it. The certificate is double-sided. You get a really nice picture of Tom Baker, quite jazzy and colorful, not actually holding the Sonic screwdriver, but that kind of makes sense because it's right there on the table. You also get some how to look after, how to use instructions. It also talks about the batteries, etc., which come included, but you need three AG5 or LR48 1.5 volt button cell batteries. They're in the heart of this, but it comes included already set up. I really like the stand. Uh, it's my first Sonic stand. I'm a little bit unsure of the orientation with Doctor Who facing this way and the number 93 facing this way and the signature facing this way it kind of gives it a 360 or at least 180 degree kind of nice viewing field but uh, I, I kind of like it on the angle I quite like it so I'm getting used to that but uh, that's also very nice not easy to get in and out of the box that's going to stay out of the box now this is going onto my display shelf with my Sonic within regarding the magnet on the back of the emitter tip it's always known as a magnet it's called a magnet well here's a pile of nails Let's just see whether the sonic screwdriver is effective as a magnet. By Jove, it is. Look at that. Didn't expect it to be actually magnetized, but the, uh, the back of the tip absolutely is. And whilst we're talking about magnetism, here's a couple of magnets. Obviously, the main body is aluminium, non-magnetic at all. The emitter tip, obviously, has a strong magnet on the back, so I'm not gonna go near that with an actual magnet. Just rolling this around a little bit. The back end of here, however, that dot, it's like a little grub screw. I guess that's steel, certainly got something ferrous in there. And the little bit around the speaker, the sound chip, there's obviously some metal around the batteries themselves. The rest is aluminium. And, well, look at that. Four nails, I'm sure I could pick up more not what I want to do but <laughs> it's magnetic well done rubber toe replicas okay now I'm going to give my feelings about this screwdriver and how I'm going to use it and my reasons for and against using it outside in the real world okay so I've been playing with my Sonic screwdriver I've had it for about three four days now and although I'm very happy there are some points I want to point out to you to help you with your purchasing decision so I don't think this is great for taking out of the house and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, 
The main one is in use, it's all too easy to get carried away and for the bottom pressure grip lug to detach. And if you lose that, drop that, you can be very unhappy. And worse, the sound chip, if that's the way you've chosen to set your Sonic up, can also fall out and be lost. So that's my one main negative. It being a pressure fit is fine, I can sort that out, so I'm happy to semi-seal that. But there's also the spinning going on. So as you know, this dot should be at the rear, but the actual column of aluminium can spin independently, so you can get unaligned or misaligned from this area here. The head, the emitter head also spins independently, <laughs> so you can get yourself in a bit of a strange facing situation, which really doesn't matter, but wouldn't it be nice if it just stayed neatly lined up with the front and the back as my current cosplay Sonic does. It's a beautiful piece of kit, don't get me wrong. 375 British pounds, you can still order them, so you have to pay 50% up front, 50% on delivery. Um, there's a few little things I am gonna do to try to stiffen some of the spinning parts that perhaps I don't want to spin as much as they do, but from an authenticity point of view, you really can't beat this. This is the best there is at the moment. Roboto famously making real props for Doctor Who since New Who has been back on the screens but I won't be taking this with me. It's a prized possession now, it stays at home, and it's my indoor, at home, sonic screwdriver. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think of the sonic screwdriver, and let me know whether you're going to be buying one of these fourth doctor's sonic screwdrivers.